Hi, I'm Lisa Passold and I'm reading for Poetry London. Many thanks to Poetry London and David Barrick for inviting me to read. Today I'm reading from The Riparian, a book of mine that came out a couple years ago with Frontenac House in Calgary. And I am reading today in New Orleans and uh, I'm originally from Montreal. The Riparian is a ghost story set in a town by a river. Open the box at a specific pothole on the levee into which I fall while biking. The moon slants behind me and I limp into the rip. That's the nearest bar. Of course it is. The dreaded out bartender looks me up and down and says, so you're resisting the tyranny of pretty? I stare at her. I'm unemployed, sweaty, and bleeding where I've fallen from my bike. How many wishes do you need, says the bartender. She has splendidly colored tattoos. I read the painted wooden sign over the cash. I ask the bartender why the bar is called Rip. Riparian, darling, says the biggest of the drag queens in the bar, of or on the riverbank, wetland, fenland, mudflat, morass, quagmire. Her silver eyeshadow gleams. Above her, the ceiling's missing part of its gilded plaster cornice. She's bewigged, cupid bowed royalty. Let me guess, she says. You moved here thinking we'd save you, but this place never saved anyone. We just drag you down faster. Maybe that's what I want, I say. The bartender brings me a whiskey and says, don't kid yourself, darling. You're the kind who keeps on swimming. I look at the missing person posters, a colorless, too thin man, a round face child, a brown freckled woman laughing. Nail against the wood, hammer against the head. My nose, though not broken, is blackened blue. I sit on a red bar stool, missing half its cushion. I may not be a lucky person, and I'm beginning to realize I am definitely not a kind one. The bartender tilts her head at me. Oh, baby, we're all going down the wrong way on this street in our best Frenchman on Sunday leatherette pants. A breakup, am I right? You do like after a funeral. You take off your torn jacket and never wear black again. You want ice for that nose? The computerized jukebox switches from thriller to a lesser known share. I take the ice wet against my cheek. It's not what you think, I say. It was an accident. I fell. The bartender shrugs. Sure, baby. An alligator came out between the parked cars and hit you in the face. It happens. The drag queen squints her eyes knowingly. The TV blares without sound. The news mostly concerns itself with failed SUV jackings near the airport. Someone has drowned somewhere. The lead story, though, is a guy who stole live crawfish from Cajun seafood by shoving handfuls down his pants. He's on security video, says the bartender, nodding towards the television. YouTube him. It's all true. You have to remember to be wicked, says the drag queen. People appreciate it so. She holds out her well-manicured, chapped fingers and touches the water dripping from my damaged hand. The name's Lyle, Captain Lyle Chauvin. Long enough on the river, a girl understands what men think of as a whole, a void, is really an active, self-dredging mud cunt. A girl has to protect herself, no one else will. Notice how the mirror reflects the shadow between our legs as blackness, the same way the river defends herself. That dead zone in the sea, the river made that, flowed all that shit out as far as she could. The river has her subjects and her monsters. The bartender slides a fresh drink along the worn wooden bar. You ever need someone beat up, she says, Lyle's the queen to call. It's not like that, I say. I fell off my bike, is all. 
Police say the location was the stairs leading into the river. Things broken wash up here. A stray dog steps delicately from the overgrowth near the construction dumpster. Peeled rubber gloves, soiled diapers, wild peas, swamp lace, green glass shards, Miss River just beyond oil sheen and glitter. A barge passes concrete loaded gray, the tug's yellow receiver mast just visible. What should be immobile made feasible by the river's displacing strength all the world wants contained. The wake pulls along detritus, tree trunks, a dead cormorant patch of scum rippling slow, steady towards shore. The Nyx will be a naked man or a beautifully dressed violin player. He stands in the river calling the storm. If I were honest, I'd tell the bartender, yes, I watched the Nyx climb through the river's broken girders as if the old pier were a wooden roller coaster he was engaged in repairing. I know the river's phantom does magic tricks on the boardwalk, sometimes for tips. That night, I watched him pull a chain of linked razor blades from his mouth to make a necklace. I threw that trinket into the river. The blades flickered on the water's surface, then sank. I saw him wince, his outline waver. The night was darker, I fell, the road was uneven. I'm not sure I'll ever get this story right. A little boy looks the stranger straight in the eye and sees absence, that not right glossy flatness of stones. So when the man says, come along with me now, the boy replies, no, I have to go home and get ready for school tomorrow. The boy is wearing his almost new shoes, patterned like Spider-Man, red and blue marvel. The marvelous protects. This boy is no fool. He wants his bones to hide him in darkness, but his mama has taught him proper. He is polite. He walks away without running. He goes inside the house and closes the shutters all alone, reaching wide and sliding the lock fast. Lyle says, put this tail in a concrete box and take it to the river. The past is a shoebox given to a child for a miniature parade float. Balance every scrap on its upturned surface, spackle liberally with lipstick and pubic hair. Dust the rough bits with pink glitter and drag that braided pony string through the broke down streets. Your personal John the Revelator, hot green chili pinch where it hurts the most. Burn that past if you want to, but those ashes all stick to your fingerprints like DNA. Who isn't better drowning some memories? Concrete stays down, best thing about it. This is what the bartender told me. It is rare, but it does happen. The Nix catches you and drags you down. Occasionally he comes to shore out of love. That's what he calls it. He sings to us the months of May and June. The Nix sees if he can hold us, if he can drag us down. On the old pier, the heron stands still, waiting for fish. Wriggling dark lines pulse in the brown water, that muscle tick in the eye, coursing at sunset. I'm balanced on the surface of my life, peering down. I turn my back to the river and chain my bike outside the rip, insistent, the rascality of place, its absurdity in the evening. Everything is pinked with love rainbows. We are poisonously poisoned. The air is liquid silver. Lyle's wearing a 70s movie poster rock star candy wig. When I compliment its color, she says, I never look good in pink. I've tried every goddamn shade. I've had a shitty week. I nod. I attempt to be Shakespearean and fail. I'm looking really carefully at this place. I don't want fairy lights out of reach or logic. I don't even want affection. If 
I can't have enlightenment, I want a beer. Lyle's beehive wig is a great rounded pink question, so rose ivory and close, I can't decipher its message. The bartender hands me a pint of amber beer and frowns at my next emptying glass. Things broken can be mended and recast. I'm waiting. A man is playing trumpet in a duet with a boombox on the levee. Thanks. Thank you, Poetry London. Good night.